Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Monday, June 25th, 2018. In the Atlantic, things are nice and quiet. Nothing expected over the next couple of days. And that is the case for the next five days as well. Although, we'll be watching a disturbance that's moving across this region, possibly heading out to sea. Kind of like we see when we get these nor'easters that do that in the wintertime. But now that water temperatures in this area are warm, especially in the Gulf Stream, perhaps something will develop. It's not unprecedented that you get some kind of a mesoscale convective feature, fancy way of saying a large thunderstorm cluster that moves off the continent of North America into the warm Atlantic and then off it goes. In 2014, Arthur formed from a system just like that and then moved up across this way and actually went up into um, Nova Scotia, if memory serves. Nothing like that this year it doesn't look like, but we'll examine what we might have coming up. In the eastern Pacific, things are quite busy. The five-day outlook, including Daniel here, which is really not much of an issue. This area is not, it's 0%. It's not going to make the team, so to speak. And uh, yet, we do have these two other areas, 90% chance of development. And this one that does not even show up on the two-day outlook map, I guess it's going to develop out of this conglomeration here, uh, means that the eastern Pacific, the southeast Pacific, is going to be quite busy. And if we look at the analysis here, the 26 degrees uh, Celsius isotherm right through here, roughly 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and most of this activity going to develop in this region. So water temperatures are, in fact, warm enough. But if we look at the anomalies, the departures from normal in that area, it's interesting to see that, generally speaking, water temperatures are a little bit cooler, closer to Mexico, of course, you got this one area right in here. I mean, basically, it's a little bit warmer than the long-term average throughout this region where we're going to see all, the, all of this development. But as, as, you, as you can see, and this is the seven-day average, the Reynolds method from the National Hurricane Center site, there's nothing that really stands out as being particularly well above average. Uh, and then down in the Nino regions, cold, relatively speaking, in the Nino 1-2 area, then you have this one little island of fairly substantial warmth, but it's kind of small. Uh, it doesn't take up the entire Pacific, what we call basin-wide or anything like that. So if you look along the equatorial region down here, generally speaking, just slightly warmer <clears throat> than average, slightly warmer than neutral. All right, so the Pacific, busy, but I'm not seeing much evidence of anything besides tropical storms and maybe some uh, garden variety hurricanes developing because as you can see and I'll just re-summarize it here this area not astoundingly above the long-term average sea surface temperature wise so that's interesting so here's a infrared shot of Daniel from the weathernerds.org site and as you can see with it not much convective activity pretty good low-level banding but it's moving over cooler water away from that 26 Celsius isotherm. Upper ocean heat content not very high, so there's not much energy for this to tap into, and it will die away. Here in the Caribbean, I wanted to show you, <clears throat> always trying to fight this cold. So it's not really the cold, it's just like leftovers. You know, like after a really big wreck and there's all that glass left over on the road for weeks? Well, that's how my throat is, I feel like, and all this congestion that I had. I don't have glass, thank goodness, but those leftover coughing fits is just annoying. Anyhow, that notwithstanding, check it out. That's upper level shear for you folks right there coming off of South America. And then at the low levels, you see these clouds streaking through. And just like scissors cut in opposite directions to shear a piece of paper in half or whatever, there you go. There's some shear for you in action. Very, very good example of that. And nothing's going to develop because of that, believe me. So, interesting tweet from Joe Bastardi. Uh, I like to look at Twitter and Storm2K and other sources, Facebook from time to time, and you see what people are talking about. You sort of get a consensus. What's the word around the campfire, so to speak? And in this case, the hurricane campfire and all the campers and Joe Bastardi included. Long-range forecasting is fantastic from Mr. Bastardi, in my opinion. Pattern recognition, etc., and uh, he has been pointing out the pattern change coming up, 
And now the euro, as we saw over the weekend, a little bit of excitement, and I use that in quotes, some air quotes going here. Excitement doesn't always mean good. I just want to temper that before you get all upset at me. Hurricanes can be exciting, but they're the bad kind of excitement, or whatever. You know where I'm coming from. Excitement built over the weekend as the euro at one point in the deterministic model showed a hurricane developing and then coming back towards North Carolina. Several days out, seven, eight, nine days away, whatever it was. And, you know, I didn't really talk about it much because it didn't seem plausible. It's just one run, one model, which is known to sort of, sort of take these features here. And in this case, it's this piece of energy that if it was winter, we'd be looking at blizzard conditions probably as this moved off the coast. But since it's summer, and as Joe alludes to here, past conditions like this have led to development. All right? So we'll have to see how this pans out over time. Uh, water temperatures are warm enough. Certainly, we look at the anomalies here from the Noah Nesda site. Very warm off the east coast here. And so this impulse that's going to try to move through and off does have a shot at trying to develop into something. And maybe, just maybe, you folks right up here in eastern New England, and specifically southeast New England, you might get some back-end northwest corner of this thing precip you know maybe some heavy rain out of it so something to keep an eye on you can see the gulf stream here outlined above normal and speaking of just the overall abnormalities here the anomalies once again nino one two region colder than average and uh, on this particular methodology uh you know a little bit warmer than average here in the tropical pacific but Nothing that jumps out as being, you know, overwhelming the system, so to speak. And then over here, I hear my printer. It must have a schedule that it does that this time of day. You hear that in the background? One day I'm just going to put my fist through it, and that will put an end to that. They're only 80 bucks. I can just get a new one. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not that angry with it. Uh, but look at this here. Cold off the coast of California and the Baja. And if that persists, then this idea of hurricanes making their way up towards the Baja and beyond later in the season is going to go bye-bye. Uh, Hawaii, though, surrounded by some positive anomalies, so we'll have to see how all this shakes out. Meanwhile, the main development region still running colder than average, but I'm going to show you a different perspective of that in just a moment. First of all, well, here it is. That moment has arrived. I thought it was later, but here you go. So I want to point this out. This is the Reynolds method, and uh, right there, Dr. Richard Reynolds, I think he's a doctor, PhD and this is just a different methodology it's a weekly average and this case the week ending June 23rd so it's fairly current and what do we see well certainly this coloration in here indicates not positive anomalies all right that's one way to look at it they're not on this side of the scale meaning more than average okay so let's see and look sort of at how much below normal they are. A lot of it has been made about this cold MDR, main development region, which is right through here, roughly. So let's look in and let's see. The <clears throat> greatest departure from normal seems to be closest to Africa over here at more than a degree Celsius, right in here, maybe a degree, a degree and a half Celsius, and then one degree Celsius below right there, and everything else is just slightly below. And then west of there, for the most part, everything is above normal. So we're not talking about a vast area of the Atlantic in the deep tropics significantly below normal. And as we get closer and closer to mid-August and September, this should continue to moderate over time, especially as the pressure pattern change comes up that we've been talking about. We'll examine that again tomorrow. And so my point is, Yes, it's not last year in terms of it was quite a bit above normal, but we're not talking about a massive, massive area. And it's interesting that this has shifted from here over to this way you know, in recent uh, days and weeks. And now, you know, just knocking on the door of the northeast Atlantic up here, uh, just north of the Iberian Peninsula, some positive anomalies near Ireland and Great Britain and towards uh, the northern coast of Spain and Portugal. And so we'll just have to watch all this because this current that comes south here, the Canary Current, maybe some of this warm water will get pushed south. It's just always evolving and always interesting to look at. But to put it in perspective, 
Again, the coldest temperatures relative to average right here next to Africa. And as I have said, and I saw uh, there was a discussion about this last night. In fact, let me pull that up. We'll just kind of switch gears. I can do that. This is my broadcast, so to speak. i got to find the X to get rid of Mr. Bastardi's tweet. Look at what we were talking about last night, me and Tyler Stanfield. I believe that's how you say his name. If I can scroll, please give me my scroller. Thank you. A lot of conversation on my Twitter today. Da, 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 da. Where was it? Where was it? There it is. Yep, Tyler Stanfield last night out of Oklahoma. And here it was. Uh, African easterly waves enhanced by the favorable MJO phase and a convectively coupled Kelvin wave will be exiting off the continent over the next week. Uh, the waves are more amplified than what we've seen so far this year, but of course the environment down across this region is not conducive. And I responded that, you know, hey, those waves being that invigorated against the background state being, you know, hostile through here, maybe that enhances the possibility of development later in the season. And so that goes back to what I was talking about here. Yes, you've got these vigorous tropical waves coming off and in this environment they're not going to develop but what happens when they get over here or over here and later down the road as they increase in their latitudinal um, genesis in other words the kind of low latitude developing now later on they'll start up here and so they won't all end up over in the east pack they start coming this way it's just a matter of perspective you know just trying to balance it out yes the Atlantic's colder than last year and the coldest since 1982, evidently. But in the background, we have other things happening, such as very vigorous tropical waves. And so we just don't want people to think there's not going to be a hurricane season. There might not be, but to say definitively, it's just going to be inactive. People have enough going on. We don't need to give them more reasons to be apathetic. But at the same time, we don't want to manufacture something that's not going to happen either. And you know me, I'm pretty careful about that. So just showing you the observations. That's what we're doing. All right, golf temps, the actual sea surface temperatures here. And let's draw on it with blue. Um, look at that shelf water off Florida. 30 and 31 Celsius. Whew, toasty. We're talking 85, 86 degrees Fahrenheit. All of the Gulf of Mexico, as it always is, very warm. And in some cases, it's anomalously so, a little bit warmer than normal. But make no mistake, the Gulf of Mexico by August, September, will be warm enough for intense hurricanes. Um, it's just a matter of does something come along to take advantage of it. And we don't know. We just don't know. All right, off the east coast here, as we wrap things up, our disturbance moving through this area right now that the Euro is jumping on, move off the coast, maybe out in this region where we do have enough upper ocean heat content and the Gulf Stream, and they are actually related in that situation. 26 degrees Celsius isotherm prevalent. Possibly some development as it heads away, but it'll be a shipping interest item only. Nothing to worry about in terms of land interaction. But if, uh, and that's just the outline of the Gulf Stream, I'm not necessarily saying it's going to take that track. Last night the European brought it up something like this. I, I can't remember precisely. Um, we'll certainly talk about it more tomorrow as we see if this is going to happen. Let's put it that way. But at the uh, end of the day, you folks right here might get some rain from it. It's sort of like a extra tropical mid-latitude storm that develops some tropical characteristics. That's what I think could develop from it. All right? So we'll see what happens. An interesting few days ahead, but nothing pressing, nothing to get your anxiety levels up things like that and that's good because that might happen in august and september and we'll just save it all for then all right no reason to burn it all up now have a good rest of your monday as always i appreciate you tuning in i am mark suddath hurricane i'll be back with more for you tomorrow afternoon